You know, I've lived with this case for four and a half years, and I still struggle. I cannot come up with words. You know, normally I'm a pretty straightforward shooter, shoot from the hip kind of person, right? I can look at defendant and tell them what I think, and I will. But I struggle knowing you are all out there. On behalf of the Hugginses, thank you for the insight into that family. I don't think any of us knew that. We didn't know about the children. We, we knew about the children. We knew about their ages. But we didn't know about what a close-knit family. And we heard from uh, Mr. Uh, Lindell Lewis's sister. So we have some insight into him and into Gloria. But we didn't have insight into the Huggins' family and the Boggs' family. And so we want to thank you for that. And you know, many people will see this type of emotion for me as a sign of weakness. I consider it compassion for all of you because these are senseless, they're tragic, and completely unnecessary. The compassion that the Huggins' family has shown you, that you refuse to show your neighbors, is if you show them half of that, they would still be alive today. You may have gotten to know them. You may have found that you liked them. Instead of accusing them of being homosexuals, of being alcoholics, of being gamblers. But you chose to take it into your own hands. You chose to seek revenge and not live by the Bible. I disagree with that, Your You had an opportunity to talk, you're done. It's my turn. I have sat on my hands for four and a half years and listened to you rant and rave about how you've been railroaded, how the evidence has been uh, uh, tampered with, how they're setting you up, how I was giving signals to them, how I'm on their side, when I bent over backwards to assure that you had a safe, effective, and fair trial. A jury of your peers that you were in the process and proceeded to select have found you guilty of killing nine people and attempting to kill one other person and starting two fires and to watch, not a word, Mr. Ford, and to watch that video and to watch you enter that house knowing that the first one you said killed two people. And knowing that you were setting the second one, that there were seven people in that house, and you still chose to do that in the cover of darkness, knowing that those houses go up in a blaze, knowing that there are people sleeping in those houses. If you wanted them out of the neighborhood, you could have proceeded a lot differently. To watch that video of Linda Lewis and Gloria Hart's house go up in flames, and to know that those people were inside while that video was going. I can only imagine the fear in all of them. And for those babies being huddled underneath their parents while Jared Boggs is trying to get from the third floor outside to get help. And the lives of the firefighters that you put at risk by having to go in that house to put those fires out and to potentially walk through a house that could have collapsed at any moment to retrieve those victims. There are no words to explain it. It is the most atrocious version of these types of offenses that could possibly happen. And while you have maintained your innocence throughout this trial, you have shown not a shred of sympathy or remorse during this four and a half years. So I thank the Huggins and the Boggs family for your dedication, your continued support and commitment to this process. Our system is not perfect, but it's the only one we have. And there were, very there were times when this was tumultuous, there were times when it was confrontational, but we all worked through it, and I believe got to a point where we are today. So Mr. Ford, please rise. The jury having found you guilty, I find based on the facts and circumstances of this case in consideration of the relevant sentencing factors, applying the minimum sanction the court has determined will protect the public and punish the offender without imposing an unnecessary burden on state or local resources, I'm imposing the following. As to count one, the aggravated murder of Angela Boggs based on prior calculation of design and design, I'm imposing a life in prison without the possibility of parole based on the verdict of the jury. Specification three, the, art, the repeat violent offender specification, 
2929-14B2A does not permit me to sentence him on that specification due to the fact that he's serving a life sentence. In count nine, the aggravated murder of Dennis Huggins based on aggravated arson, the jury having uh, found the defendant guilty of that offense as well as the specifications and have sentenced him to a life in prison without the possibility of parole on specifications one and two. Specification three is again a repeat by an offender specification and I am not permitted to sentence him because he is going to serve a life sentence. Count 10 as to Jared Boggs, aggravated, uh, aggravated murder based on aggravated arson and the specifications one and two to those counts the jury found the defendant guilty and sentenced him to a life in prison without the possibility of parole. Specification three I will not sentence on because he is serving a life sentence. In count 15, the aggravated murder of Deja Huggins being under the age of 13 and the jury uh, sentencing the defendant in specifications 1, 2, and 3 to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Specification 4 is a repeat bond offender specification and I will not sentence him because the statute does not permit me to. Count 16, the aggravated murder of Kyle Huggins. Uh, for being under the age of 13 and the jury finding him guilty of that and sentencing him to specifications 1, 2, and 3 to life in prison without the possibility of parole. I will not sentence on specification 4, which is the repeat violent offender specification due to him serving a life sentence. Count 17, the aggravated murder of Olivia Huggins, being under the age of 13 years of age at the time of her death. Specification 1, 2, and 3, the jury found him guilty of that and sentenced him to a life in prison without the possibility of parole. Specification 4, the repeat violent offender specification, I will not sentence him on because he is serving a life sentence. Cameron Huggins, the aggravated murder in count 18, being under eight, 13 years of age, the jury found you guilty of that as well as specification 1, 2, and 3 and sentenced you to a life in prison without the possibility of parole. I will not sentence on count or specification for the repeat violent offender specification as you will be serving a life sentence. Count 21, the aggravated murder of Linda Lewis based on prior calculation and design. The jury finds you guilty of that offense in specification 1 and 2 and sentence you to a life in prison without the possibility of parole. I will not sentence on specification 3, the repeat violent offender specification as you are serving a life sentence. Best, uh, count 24, the aggravated murder of Gloria Hart based on aggravated arson. The jury found you guilty of that offense and sentenced you to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So specification 1 and 2, I will not order uh, or not sentence you on specification 3, the repeat violent offender specification, as you will be serving a life sentence. So I am imposing a life sentence without the possibility of parole on counts 1, 9. 10, 15, 21, and 24. As to counts 26, the attempted aggravated murder of Thomas Hughley, the jury found you guilty of that offense, and I found you guilty of specification one to count one, the repeat violent offender specification. I'm going to sentence you on the attempted aggravated murder to 11 years in the Ohio Department of Corrections, and because um, that is the maximum sentence on that offense, I am permitted under the repeat violent offender specification to add an additional 10 years consecutive to the attempted aggravated murder for a total of 21 years. I find uh, pursuant to the statute, I am permitted to do that after considering the factors set forth in 29-29-12. And as this is the most heinous offense, uh, uh, version of this offense, I believe that that RBO specification is appropriate. I am running, I am finding, based on the information before me, based on the defendant's prior record, and I find that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime and to punish the offender, and it's not disproportionate to the seriousness of the offender's conduct. While I realize you can only live one life, every day you serve for the rest of your life, you will know that you can be sentenced for the death of each one of these victims and the attempted death and attempted murder of Thomas Hughley. I find that one or more of these offenses was committed while, at least two of those offenses, excuse me, were committed as part of one or more courses of conduct, and the harm caused by two or more of those offenses was so great or unusual that no single prison term for any offense committed as part of the course of conduct adequately reflects the seriousness of the conduct. And I also find that your criminal history, uh, while you had a uh, significant term of uh, nonviolent uh, 
living. I also find though your criminal history demonstrates that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime. Therefore, as to the death of Angela Boggs in count one, life, I'm imposing a life in prison without the possibility of parole consecutive to count nine, the aggravated murder of Dennis Huggins, and I'm imposing life in prison without the possibility of parole consecutive to count ten, the aggravated murder of Jared Boggs, you will serve life in prison without the possibility of parole. Consecutive to the aggravated murder of Deja Huggins in count 15, where you will serve a, a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. Consecutive to count 16, the aggravated murder of Kyle Huggins, and you will serve a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Consecutive to Olivia Huggins in count 17, where you will serve a, life, a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Consecutive to count 18, the aggravated murder of Cameron Huggins, where you will serve a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Consecutive to count 21, the aggravated murder of Lindell Lewis, where you, will, where you will serve a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. And count 24, the aggravated murder of Gloria Hart, where you will serve a, life, a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. Nine consecutive life counts consecutive to the attempted aggravated murder of Thomas Hughley and the RBO specification. Nine life sentences consecutive to each other without the possibility of parole consecutive to 21 years. Lastly, I have ordered restitution. I will not order a fine. I will order that on the following dates you will be held in solitary confinement. May 17th. April 18th, December 8th, December 23rd, January 10th, and January 15th. I'm giving you credit for 1,617 days of jail time credit, and based on your statements by your counsel, um, you have the right to appeal this conviction within 30 days of today's date, and I will, upon proper notification by the State Public Defender's Office, appoint the State Public Defender to represent you on that appeal. I'm further ordering that the online docket now be unsealed and I'm removing the gag order. Anything else for the record, gentlemen? I do have to say one more thing. I apologize on the attempted aggravated murder and the RBO specification. The defendant faces uh, a mandatory term of post-release control of two to five years, even though he will never see the light of day. That statute requires me to inform him of that. If he were to be placed on, when he were to be placed on post-release control, if he were to violate the terms and conditions, he could be returned to prison for up to half of his stated prison term. Mr. Ford, I hope God has mercy on your soul, and I hope at some point in time you seek the mercy and the forgiveness of your Creator. We're adjourned. Your Honor. Yes. Before we're adjourned, I, I believe, Judge, because you have uh, imposed max consecutive sentences on all counts, I think we would object to that, Judge, for purposes of appeal. Thank you. Your objection is noted and overruled. I think I've made the record abundantly clear as to why those are necessary. We're adjourned. Thank you.